Hello guys, welcome to the channel. In this particular video, I will explain the problem count the subarrays having product less than k. So this problem is asked in Goldman Sachs interview and the problem is really interesting. All you need to do is stay tuned till the end of the video and at last you will have a complete understanding of the problem and the solution. So let me start with the problem statement. It says that you are given an array of positive numbers. The task is to find the number of possible contiguous subarrays having product less than a given number k. Talking about the input, so we are given an array and the number k, right? Okay, so let me explain this particular example. First of all, I am going to write all the subarrays which will be formed due to this array and along with this I will write the product of the subarrays. So let's start. First subarray that I have is 1, then I have 1, 2. After this 1, 2, 3, then I have 1, 2, 3, 4. After this I have 2, then I have uh, 2, 3, then I have 2, 3, 4. After this I have a single element which is 3, then I have 3, 4, then I have 4, right? Okay, so these are the subarrays. Now let me write the product values. So I have 1, then 2, then 6, 24, 2 again, 6 again, 24 then 3 then 12 then uh, 4 right okay so these are the product values now what i'll do is i'll write all the uh, okay so i'll mark all those product values which are smaller than k so i have 1 2 6 then again 2 6 then 3 and 4 right these are the values so you can see that uh, if i count these then i will have the total values as 7 so 7 is going to be the output here now i hope you have understood the problem statement so let's talk about the solution now. Okay, so here I have written the same example as given in the problem statement, right? And the first approach that uh, that will come to your mind is quite similar to this one. What you can do is you can write all the subarrays first, then you can find the product and then you can simply count those values which have uh, like product less than k. Okay, how we can implement this? We are going to implement this smartly because uh, okay so let's see how we can implement this uh, what I'll do is first of all uh, we have to get these subarrays right and how we get the subarrays of an array if I have array 1 2 3 4 and all I need to get is two pointers right once I have got two pointers i and j then I have to write all the values in the range from i and j and these i and j are going to iterate over all the elements like uh, I'll start with this i, i as starting element, then I'll write, uh, I'll try to combine all the elements with this one. So I will have 1, then 1, 2, then 1, 2, 3, then 1, 2, 3, 4. You can see that all first subarrays, first four subarrays are starting with 1, right? So after this, I can move this i here. Then I can write all the elements starting with i. So I will have 2, then 3, then 4, right? So you can see here I have 2, then 2, 3, then 2, 3, 4. So this is nothing but 4. Uh, i equals to 0 to n right and then i plus plus along with this uh, inside this i am going to start with the position i and then i am going to include all the elements till n so i'll do 4 uh, j equals to i then j is smaller than n then j plus plus okay now uh, i need to get all the subarrays right but interestingly, instead of getting all the subarrays in the range from i to j, what we can do is we can get the product values, right? And once we have got the product values, so we can simply check if my product is less than k. So first of all, let me write this. If my product uh, is less than k, then I can do answer plus plus. This answer is going to give us the count. So initially the count is zero and at last I need to return the answer, right? So question is, I have not initialized the product values yet, yet, right? So how to initialize and calculate the product values? For every value of i, for every new value of i, we have to initialize the product value as k. And you can see that uh, first the product value will become 2, then it will become 2 into 3, which is 6, then it will become 2 into 3 into 4, right? So it will it is nothing but 24. And you can match these three product values with these values, right? Because I am starting with 2 here. Okay, so initially I will have product value as 1 for every new value of i, right? And after this, this product value will be calculated like product multiply equals to current value of i, current value of j, right? 
okay so this is how we can solve this problem this is the first approach and i'll call this a naive approach naive approach and the complexity of this approach is going to be o of n square right you can see here we have two nested loops so the this complexity is not going to work for the large inputs this is the problem so we can optimize this code let's see how we can write the optimal approach before writing the optimal approach what i'll do is i'll start with the intuition first and let me write the same example with of the problem statement which is n equals to 4 then i have k equals to 10 after this i have array equals to 1 2 3 and 4 right okay now one more thing is you can see here uh, the value of k is 10 but i'm going to increase the value of k okay now instead of taking this array let me start with a single element which is one so initially i have the single element and i know the product of this element is something smaller than k so i will have the answer as one initially right you can see here the answer is one let's say a new value is introduced which is two as given in this array right so now i have got two values in my array right my question is how the answer is going to change because of this new uh, value you can see here the product of these two element is again smaller than k product is 2 right and 2 is smaller than 1000 okay so the question is how the value uh, of answer is going to change because of this now you can see that because of this two two new arrays will be introduced the first is 1 2 this is one of the sub arrays and the second is the 2 itself right so all both these sub arrays contain the element 2 because uh, so these are introduced because of this 2 right so answer is going to increase by 2 let me introduce one more element which is 3 right okay so again the product uh, of this uh, like these three numbers will be smaller than k which is 6 right okay the question is same how the answer uh, how the value of answer is going to increase because of this uh, this particular element right the answer is now you can see that this 3 can combine with uh, this 2 and this 1 2 right so it will be 1 2 3 this is one of the possibility and 2 3 is again one of the possibility and 3 itself is again one of the possibility so now the answer will be increased by 3 times right and similarly let's say i have new element 4 so for this the answer will increase by 4 times so you can see that for every element j the answer okay so for uh, like every element array of j, j is basically uh, representing the index. So for every element array of j, the answer is going to increase by uh, like n times, right? But uh, n is actually, let me tell you what is n. n is actually count of these four elements, right? So let's say I have a starting point i. So now I can get the value of n. I will say j minus i plus 1. Answer will be increased by this particular value. I hope you understand this thing right so now let me tell you one thing that this i to j is basically a range right and the product of elements in this range is something which is less than k so this is something from where we can build the intuition the intuition is quite simple that once we have got uh, the range i to j then we can simply calculate the answer uh, by doing this right and this is basically the contribution made by the current element j and we are going to iterate over every element so let's say i have this array so j will be currently at this point i will uh, add the contribution due to this then contribution due to this then contribution due to this then due to this right okay so this is how we can solve the problem now i hope you are clear with the intuition let's talk about the approach now okay so here uh, I'm going to write again the same example which is given in the problem statement n equals to 4 then k equals to 10 then I have a equals to which is array 1 2 3 4 right so this is the array that we have now what I'll do is I'll try to solve the problem solve this particular example along with the pseudo code that I'm going to write okay so initially you can see that the uh, value of i and j is going to be 0 so i and j are pointing here and initially i equals to 0 and j equals to 0 right let me draw a line here so that i can write the pseudo code in a separate uh, like place okay so initially the value of i and j is 0 and what i'll do is i'll make one more variable which is product which is initially equal to 1 why this product because i want to keep track of uh, like product of element in the range from i to j right okay so i'll start a loop 
it is going to iterate over all the elements and j is something which is a greater pointer right so i'll write while my j is smaller than n because this thing is sure that j will first reach n and once j have reached n i have to stop at that point so while j is greater uh, j is smaller than n first of all my task is to multiply the current element with the product so current element is array of j right so this is going to give me the product as product as 1 right my product is 1 the value of i is 0 and the value of j is 0 okay so i will check if my product is something which is greater than uh, like mm, k so if my product is something which is greater than k no it is not greater than k right so i'll simply do answer plus equals to uh, j minus i plus 1 right this is something that i will do so i have to check if my uh, like product is greater than k if this is greater than k then of course we have to do something uh, here but for this time this is not greater than k right so that's why i'm doing this thing and after this i can simply increase the value of j so j will now point to this particular place so i'll do j plus equals to 1 right okay so this is how we can move this is how we can move initially the product value of product is 1 and answer is answer has become uh what is the value of j j and i are same right so this will be 1 for this element after this i come to this element and the product becomes 2 right because 1 into 2 is 2 okay so how the answer is going to increase answer will become uh, this is index 1 right so 1 minus 0 plus 1 this is 2 answer will increase by 2 okay now i will come to this point this is again j and you can see here till now we have not reached this particular condition okay so at this point again you can see that uh, the product is smaller than k which is product has become 6 now right okay so here the answer will increase by 3 times because this is 2 and 2 minus 0 plus 1 2 minus 0 plus 1 is 3 right okay so after this j will come to this point and now the product has become 24 right so you can see here once the product has become 24 our task is to calculate the contribution due to this so we are going to increase the value of i till now we have uh, like till then we have the product which is less than k and when we uh, like make sure that when you increase the value of i then you have to exclude the contribution made due to these elements right this is what we have to do like you have the product as 24 and when you want to exclude the contribution due to this element so as you have multiplied this element so you have to divide with the same element similarly as you have multiplied with uh, the number with 2 then you have to divide the number with 2 right so what we'll do is instead of using the uh, if we'll using a while loop here like till our product is greater than k so i'll do while we have to increase i till it is smaller than equal to j right and product is something which is greater than equal to k so what we will do here is we will try to exclude the element we will do product product uh, divide equals to array of i right okay uh, let me raise this part so i'll do array of i and we'll do i plus plus uh, let me raise this part i don't know why uh, the mark is not following a uniform uh, thickness here but i plus plus right so this is what we can do and when we do this thing then you can see that i will keep increasing till i reaches this this particular point right because for this point okay so here we have the product is 24 then the product become 12 when we exclude this element and 12 is still greater than k right then we again increase 12 so at this point the value of k we, uh, like product will become 4 right and i and j will be pointing at this element 4 j is here i is here and the index is 3 so when i do 3 minus 3 plus 1 then i'll get 1 right so i'll increase the answer by 1 here this is for last iteration so at last we will have the answer as 3 plus 2 5 plus 6 plus 7 right so the answer will be 7 and at last we can simply return uh, like answer so this is how we can solve the problem this is the exact code that you need to follow right and talking about the time complexity of this code so you can see that the time complexity is o of n here right we are only traversing the array uh, once so now let me show you the code here is the code I have written the C++ Java and the Python code and you can see that C++ and Java code is exactly same right 
but the only change is in the python code and the change is of syntax right you can uh, copy the java code uh, into the c++ compiler and this is going to work fine but this is not the case with the c++ uh, like python compiler right so i hope you have understood the problem you have got the clear idea to solve the uh, problem and this is all about this video if you guys like the explanation then you can hit the like button thank you